Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hey there guys, today I wanted to do a follow up on the last update video I did and clarify some of my thoughts on some of the comments that I talked about at the end of the video a bit better as well as to give a couple of more updates that uh, I kind of forgot to talk about during that first video. So in the last video I talked about some of the type of comments I received that oftentimes just have me shaking my head. But I don't think I thoroughly emphasized just how much I appreciate the great majority of comments. Probably 99.7% of the comments that I receive are fantastic. They are full of good ideas, great suggestions, well wishes. And I even appreciate the constructively critical ones where somebody might be pointing out a safety issue or maybe a better way that I could be doing something. And I just want to really emphasize that I do appreciate those comments and I can't thank you guys enough for all of the great comments that I do receive. They provide me with great ideas and help me improve my projects as a whole. Now the comments I was referring to probably total one tenth of one percent of all of the comments, but they are the type of comments where people are obviously displeased with me using colorful language in all caps to describe uh, <laughs> the things I'm not doing right, or my intelligence, or various other things. Um, also my grammar or my use of certain terminologies uh, improperly like uh, pilot holes versus pre-drilling holes and who versus whom and, and various things like that. But I can only be me and I can only describe things the way they work in my head. So irregardless or regardless, tomato, tomato, <laughs> flux or slag, I'm just going to keep going forward the way that I know how to work and uh, that's the way things are going to be. I also talked a bit about commenters asking questions that I thought I addressed several times within a video and I kind of felt like they had never watched the video in the first place but then I started thinking about it and I was thinking well I hope I'm not alienating people to where they're afraid to ask a question so if you have a question just go ahead and ask it. Um, those were really my thoughts based on a couple of videos where it just seemingly happened a lot and people <laughs> were uh, describing me with uh, adverbs like stupid and things like that or why didn't you show this you idiot. Um, so that was probably more of my frustrations coming out in that comment. And then I talked about the you should comments where people are offering their very direct or pointed advice on pretty much everything I should do differently with my life uh, without really knowing the context of, of my capabilities and my finances and different things like that. Uh, uh, if I followed every one of those you should comments then uh, I would be bankrupt to the tune of a couple million dollars. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> that was another one of those kind of just frustrated with things uh, that I just kind of was getting off my chest. And then I realized I had just fallen into their trap. I had spent seven or eight minutes focusing on those who provide probably one tenth of one percent of all the comments on my videos and not focusing on those of you who provide 99% of the great insightful um, idea generating comments that make this a great community to be a part of and for that I thank you the 99% 99.7 something like that. I have you guys to thank for making this place where I'm not afraid to share my projects with uh, where I'm not afraid to share my successes as well as my failures and everything in between and <laughs> everything in between is a whole lot uh, because a lot of my projects are really just kind of <laughs> average mediocre junk. Uh, but uh, I just can't thank you guys enough. I hope I haven't said thank you too much, but I really, really do mean it. So now I'm going to get back to the shop and trailer updates, which if you saw the last video, probably eight or nine minutes of it will just be the exact same stuff that was in the last video. And the reason I am going to include that as well as some additional things after that um, is because I'm considering maybe just deleting that last video uh, because as I mentioned before, I just don't want to give credit to such a small percentage of people <laughs> who really uh, don't need to be uh, given any more credit to. I'd rather focus on the positive, insightful, and value adding things and not the negative ones. So let's get to it.
Okay, first up, the travel trailer. What have I been working on and why is it taking so long? Well, I've been working on the front dinette and the reason it's taking so long is I'm a bit confused as to what direction I wanna go with it. So let me take you inside and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I think that's about as good as it's gonna look. So let me talk about the dinette now or what I have as the beginnings of a dinette. I started out with a couple of boxes that have removable inserts so that I can store stuff inside them by taking off the cushions. And I built these boxes to fit these little folding cushions that I got off of Amazon. They both fold out completely to make beds. My thought was that one would fold out to make a bed here and then if we ever had any company or my daughter had a friend, we could have a separate bed fold out. And they are actually reasonably comfortable but my one uh, thought or conundrum is that they take quite a bit of space here in the back which pushes me kind of towards the front. Um, so I don't know if I want to continue with these. I kind of wish that it was thinner back here so that I could sit further back and have a little more space from where the table will eventually go right here. I have a sliding mechanism right here that will slide a tabletop up and down. And theoretically, that tabletop will slide right here. I'll take one of these cushions off and then fold the other out to make a bed. But it's just, as I said, not quite super uh, space efficient. And I don't know if I wanna continue on with this or if I want to maybe make this into a couch into my daughter's playhouse and then start with some custom made cushions. So that's kind of what I've been thinking about and why this section is taking so long. Next up, let's go talk about the shop. All right, this shop, the taker of so much of my time over the past year and a half is going to be taking up more of my time in the future. This is going to be the first major hail repair project that I work on and really is the reason that uh, the trailer has kind of slowed down the progress uh, even more so than it had been slowed down. And that is because of the leak that developed inside the shop when the original roofing was damaged. Uh, so I kind of put that as a first priority. So I've taken off all that roofing over the main shop and I did find out what the leak was uh, derived from and it was when I put the boards um, on the inside of the shop to mount the ceiling material to, I had used sheet metal screws in various areas and uh, a couple of them I had repositioned and I never sealed up those holes so there were some open holes on the original shipping container roof which obviously when water had gotten in there from the original roofing failing um, it had worked its way down uh, into what otherwise was a waterproof container and then leaked through those holes. Anyway, I took all the roofing off. I went in and sealed every one of those holes with an asphalt kind of rubber, uh, rubbery material. And I think that thing will be pretty much bomb proof. And I've uh, since replaced it with a solid plywood decking. And it now has a uh, underlayment, a waterproof underlayment on it in preparation for me to potentially add some standing seam roofing or corrugated roofing like my house. I'm still not exactly sure, but I think I'm leaning towards the standing seam. And I'll show you a sample of that right now. Um, but that is what is going to be uh, taking up some of the time in between working on the camp trailer. And uh, I don't know, let me take you and show you that roofing right now. And here's a sample of what the standing seam roofing looks like. It has two raised edges. This side gets mounted down with clips and then this side overlaps that side and gets crimped down to form a seam. It is a bit more expensive and I will have to come out of pocket a little bit from uh, what the insurance was gonna reimburse me for the original shop roof. But I think it might be worth it because there's no exposed fasteners and it's usually made of a thicker gauge metal. Um, but I also do like corrugated metal, so I might end up going with that as well. And I almost forgot to mention a couple other things with the shop. One is that I will also be replacing the ceiling. 
uh, from where that leak was. This is what the damaged ceiling panels look like. Um, that's like a painted MDF material and it's all warped and I've just really never been happy with it. So my plan is to eventually replace it with corrugated uh, vinyl or corrugated metal or something. I've already started taking them down there. I think it'll look a lot nicer. And then on the outside, you'll notice when I did the roofing, I ended up taking off the little uh, fence boards that I had sided it with. I thought it looked really nice at first and I th still think it looks okay, but the problem with it is all of those boards have started cracking and they're just not that, I guess, durable. They were cheap and unfortunately that's why I chose them. So eventually I will probably try to pick, uh, pick a better material, but anyway, all of that will get uh, sided out and then with another uh, waterproof underlayment and then I'll find something else to do those in. And one more change that may be coming to the shop due to the roofing situation is the fact that I'm considering replacing these wooden columns underneath the shop awning for steel columns and a steel upper cross beam, whatever you want to call it, so that I can remove that middle column. If you remember when I originally made this shop, I made these columns and this beam out of an old mining pallet, uh, a huge ginormous mining pallet that uh, ships big parts and pieces of machinery to the mines near me. And these columns are actually six by six oak uh, timbers, but they have cracks in them. And I've always been a little bit uh, disappointed of having that middle post when I've walked around and, and moving my, um, my workbench and, and stuff like that. And even so in the eventual process of removing this roofing, I figured this awning is going to be almost at its lightest weight that it will ever be. So I was thinking if I made a couple of braces, I might be able to hold the awning up weld up a, uh, a steel frame and put it into place before I add the new roofing. So I'm kind of looking at it as an opportunity to uh, maybe do something that I want, wanted to do but probably would not have done had this <laughs> hail thing not happened. Uh, now let's get to uh, the giveaway. And here's the giveaway. This is a Forney Industries 20P plasma cutter. It runs off of 120 volts, so you don't need any special 220 outlets or anything like that. It's pretty much a plug and play machine. And sometime later this month, I will build a project with this very plasma cutter. And then after the project's done, I will package it up in the box and send it off to the lucky winner. Uh, you'll have to do a few things like subscribe to Forney as well as myself, comment down below. And uh, anyway, I think it's going to be a pretty cool giveaway. And based on the comments, uh, you know, say if there's only 200 comments, you'll have a 1 in 200 shot of winning. <laughs> so I think it's a pretty good opportunity to get a pretty awesome little machine. And if you're wondering what I'm going to make with that plasma cutter, this is what I'm planning on using. This is 4 inch by 6 inch steel tubing. And this is actually one of the inspirations for when I started thinking about replacing my shop columns. So I might end up getting some more of this stuff uh, to do that with because it seems pretty stout. I got this at Industrial Metal Supply in their scrap yard uh, for a pretty darn good price. You might have seen it in the last video. This is the truck I'm driving right now. This is not a new truck. It's just the rental that I got while my other truck is in the shop from the hail repair damage. And also in the last video, you might have seen this ginormous uh, roll-off dumpster. I figured I'd spend a little bit extra money because I was going to have to uh, throw away a lot of the roofing and other things that got uh, damaged. And I'm also going to use it as an opportunity to clean up some of the junk that I've been hoarding. I have a little junk pile back there that I've never really shown anybody, but it's uh, various things that I have collected off of Craigslist and uh, what I consider dirt merchantry or opportunity uh, things, some of which I have used and some of which that I have just collected. So a lot of that will end up going in the dumpster. 
in the last video I didn't really mention it but the hail repair on the trailer will probably happen later this month I've been debating on whether I should strip the panels off or just simply add new panels on and after a bit of research with the VHB tape that I've used I feel like the bond is pretty strong and these panels are light enough so my current plans are just to take off this molding and I'm essentially going to layer new panels over this. It'll be taped with the same tape and then I will reseal all of the corners as well as put new panels on the top. And then I'm planning on putting one sacrificial panel over here with not too much tape but on the curved section so if I ever get damage again or something on the road flies up and hits it I should be able to take that panel off and replace it with another one pretty easily so I can I don't know <laughs> it'll kind of be a rock guard or something like that and then the next thing on this is I'm gonna be welding these brackets on I'm gonna to have to raise this box up and this will be part of the weight distribution uh, hitch setup that I'm going to be adding on to this. And then I will be adding a bulldog style coupler hitch thingy, <laughs> whatever it's called. For the greenhouse repairs, that should be pretty simple. It'll just involve me taking off the old panels and reinstalling new panels. And I'll probably just use the old panels as templates so that I can get all of the uh, correct angles much easier. And then I might have to reinstall some new flashing as uh, on the other side, the corner or roof edge flashing is pretty uh, dented up. But uh, that should happen maybe in December or the first week or two of January. And if it does not happen by then, I probably will not plant anything in it. Uh, <laughs> which is uh, which is a bummer but you know it is what it is okay what is next um, I think that I'll just talk real quick about the chicken coop that is down there and that will probably be the last of the structures getting repaired because let's be honest the chickens are pretty resourceful they don't complain and uh, I think they're still reasonably uh, well housed in that coop. So I think they can wait a little bit longer, but I will make sure to reward them with scraps from the <laughs> kitchen table every night. Um, the playhouse was another thing that is damaged, but that has a solid decking and a, an underlayment underneath the roofing and has no leaks. So that will be getting done uh, much later there it is than the shop uh, so it'll probably be the shop the trailer the greenhouse and then uh, I don't know <laughs> and one more thing about the playhouse is that I will also probably be replacing this siding I don't know if I mentioned it before but I used the same fence boards that I used for the shop the little upper section of the shop and uh, as I mentioned before, I'm just not super uh, happy with those. And a couple of you mentioned the composite decking boards. So I might actually consider that. Uh, so it's probably between that and some sort of uh, corrugated metal or something like that. But I just want to make sure that when I install it, it is uh, uh, pretty much uh, leave it alone for the next 20 years kind of thing. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope that somewhat clarified my thoughts on those comments from the last video, as well as added maybe a little bit more of the updates about uh, things I'm planning on doing. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I can't thank you enough for being a part of my life, although it's via the internet through comments or whatever, but uh, like I said, 99.7% of you guys um, adds a whole lot to my life and I don't take things for granted, um, especially all of the blessings in my wife, uh, in my life, <laughs> most notably my wife and my daughter, um, and my faith. So I am thankful for all of those things as well as for you. And uh, check me out on Instagram, thumbs up if you like this. And I think I'm going to see you on the next video, which should be the plasma cutter giveaway. Something like that. All right, see ya.